My name is Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com and welcome back to another episode of Homeschool. For today's project, I'm going to show you how to update a bathroom faucet. Today I'm going to be showing you how to update your bathroom faucet to a new state-of-the-art fixture. I'm gonna be installing the new Grove faucet from Flow by Bemis. This is a smart touch motion activated faucet. And this is a new product on the market and full disclosure, Flow by Bemis sent me this faucet to test out and to show you guys how easy it is to install. Now, before we get started, I rate these projects by how many F-bombs you're likely to drop while tackling the project. This one isn't too difficult and is something I think that most homeowners should know how to do. In most cases, it requires minimal tools. So let's take a look at the tools that we're gonna need for this project. The only tools I'm likely to use are a pair of channel locks, a crescent wrench, and some Teflon tape. So step one is to remove the old faucet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off the water to the fixture at the valves under the sink and open up the faucet to drain as much water as possible. Next, I'm gonna throw a towel under the sink to catch any water that comes out of the water lines when I disconnect them. From there, I'm using my crescent wrench to loosen and remove the existing water lines. Now this faucet comes with new water lines, so I can just keep these ones in my plumbing kit for another project down the road. From there I can pop the connections from the faucet and remove the locking nuts that hold the fixture and faucet handles in place. Next I can lift out the handles and the faucet assembly and set them aside. I like to just take a rag or a wipe and clean the area around the sink knockout so that you have a nice clean surface. Now, as you can see from this countertop, this is what's considered a widespread faucet, which means the holes are spread far apart. The Grove faucet is a single hole faucet, so it only requires a single hole. The box came with a center set plate, which is for a three hole sink like this with narrower holes, but it doesn't come with one for a widespread faucet. So I found a matte black plate on Amazon for 14 bucks that matches this pretty good. Obviously, you'll have to make the necessary adjustments for the sink that you have. Next, I'm installing the water lines that came with the faucet by threading them into the bottom of the faucet itself and installing the set screw onto the bottom as well. From there, I can drop in the faucet assembly through the deck plate and through the center hole in the countertop. Underneath the sink, the first thing I'm doing is adding the rubber gasket and mounting washer to the set screw and then adding the nut to secure it in place. Now before I tighten the full assembly down all the way, I'm checking to make sure that the faucet and the deck plate are lined up and that they're the way that I want them, and then I can secure them down all the way with the crescent wrench. Now if you have a basin wrench, it can be a little bit helpful to get in the tighter spots up behind the sink in some cases. Next I'll install the other end of the water lines to the valves on the wall by applying some thread tape and tightening them down with the crescent wrench. Now here's where I see a lot of homeowners make some mistakes with their Teflon tape, and sometimes I do it myself. So I just wanted to show you how I try to remember to apply tape correctly. The way that you should apply your tape is to thread it clockwise to the threads as you're looking at them. So that when you tighten the nut or the cap or whatever it is that you're applying onto the threads, it doesn't bunch up the tape. The thread tape is designed to help get a watertight seal and it also lubricates the threads and keeps them from seizing up so it's not hard to remove later on. Now where this faucet differs from most is that it has this red wire hanging off of it. This faucet comes with a little power supply box which requires four AA batteries and this is the temperature display on top of the faucet. So I'm throwing some batteries in the case and it comes with a double-sided tape block or some screws where you can mount it to the wall or inside of your cabinet. From there, all that's left for the faucet is to plug in the red wire, turn on the water at the valves, and test it out. Now in this case, I already have a black pop-up drain assembly installed, but the box comes with a new one, so for the sake of this video, I'll show you how to replace that as well. The first thing to do is loosen the big nut that holds the assembly in place from beneath the sink and remove it. From there, lift the assembly out from the top. You may have to remove some washers or something underneath that has to come off as well in order to get it out. And in some cases, in older sinks, you may have to unthread your drain assembly actually from the top. It just depends on your particular setup and what, you know, how old your sink is. 
Once removed, clean the area around the drain hole. In some cases, there may be some old plumber's putty to remove. Just use a rag to remove any residual debris so that you have a nice clean surface to work with. Next, disassemble the drain assembly by removing the lock nut and the rubber washers. Most drain assemblies these days have moved away from plumber's putty and have replaced them with these rubber washers. And this one is no different. So I can just drop the upper assembly down into the hole and reinstall the rubber washers underneath. And finally, tighten down the lock nut over top. Each drain assembly is a little bit different. And in my case, I need to add a little downpipe extension to the underside. So I'm disassembling the P-trap and then reconnecting the whole assembly. Lastly, the only thing left to do is to turn it on and check everything for leaks. What's cool about this particular faucet is that it's both smart touch activated or motion activated. So you can either turn the water on by tapping on the top or just by waving your hands underneath the faucet. While I've seen these type of motion activated faucets in public settings, this is the first time I've ever had one in my home, so it's pretty cool. The other cool feature is that it displays the water temperature right on top of the faucet, which is particularly valuable as the parent of a young child. You can adjust the temperature right on the side of the faucet by twisting the handle on the side. In addition to decreasing the temperature of your water at the water heater, this can be an extra level of protection from scalding water for your kids. So that's it for this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Each faucet and manufacturer that you encounter is a little bit different, but once you get the hang of the basics, updating a bath faucet is definitely something most homeowners can tackle on their own. I wanna say a quick thank you once again to Flow by Bemis for providing the Grove faucet that you saw me install in this video. And if the Grove faucet looks like a faucet that you'd be interested in, I've included an affiliate link where you can purchase it for yourself in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. And if it's your first time visiting the channel, please hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of the new content I put out. And as always, you can find more information about this and all my DIY home improvement projects on my website at mrfixitdiy.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.